Aliens Visiting Earth, The Truth is Finally Revealed by William H. Bradshaw. What did aliens and cannabis have in common? The short answer is that the good ones are polyploids. Watch this video or read my book, Secrets of the Pink Kush, for a completely detailed explanation. My research with cannabis plants has revealed an amazing discovery that offers substantial proof to the question of UFOs and aliens here on Earth. This is brand new information and it will create controversy within the world of science, but nobody has been able to successfully debunk this brand new theory because it is the truth. Do aliens exist? Yes, mathematically they must exist on other planets, such that we are not alone. Statistics and probability suggest that there must be other life forms on other planets. Any mathematician or scientist of merit will confirm this hypothesis. It's only a hypothesis because it cannot be proven, but statistically it is a given. All life is based upon mathematical precepts that can be observed and actually computed. This includes the mathematics found in nature, like the Fibonacci series, normal distribution, golden ratio, prime numbers, fractals, DNA sequencing, and even my own polyploid formula, which is documented in my book, Secrets of the Pink Kush, which also documents how to grow superior cannabis using the same knowledge. Are we being visited by aliens? We are absolutely not being visited by extraterrestrials. It is impossible for interstellar travel. In order to get to Earth, you'd have to be able to do the following things. First, you'd have to know that Earth is an actual destination. This alone is not an easy task, as it can be evidenced here by the total lack of success of SETI. They must be capable of traveling at or near the speed of light to make the trip even remotely viable. Can one travel faster than the speed of light? This is impossible because they would have to have zero or even a negative mass to reach light speed. As one approaches the speed of light, the mass actually increases and the energy required to propel that mass increases as well. There are other issues as well, such as hitting a tiny fragment from an asteroid or a meter, etc. at high speed. The velocity against even a minuscule piece of material would cause an explosion due to the mass and velocity of the spaceship. If they cannot travel conventionally, then they must be capable of traveling through a wormhole or a black hole. Black holes will compress and destroy any carbon-based life form immediately, and nothing can leave a black hole due to the immense gravitational pull. How would they exit the hole? They would have enough. They would have to have enough food, water, air, to last the entire interstellar trip. This means at least four years worth of food if coming from our closest solar system and if traveling at the speed of light. They would also require enough strength to overcome our gravity if their gravity is, is weaker. They must be able to consume and digest our food as evolution creates different cellular adaptations based upon available nutrients and food resources. They would require a shielding mechanism to prevent from being bombarded by various wavelengths of energy. The Earth's magnetic field protects us from these deadly energies. Without it, we would be die from cancer and our brains would become completely useless due to being bombarded with these deadly wavelengths of energy. If aliens were capable of visiting Earth, we would be overwhelmed by interstellar flights, but we see none of this, despite real evidence of UFOs. There are too many factors to even begin to contemplate. The bottom line is that there are aliens out there, but they are not coming here, and we are not going there. Ironically, there are UFOs, abductions, breeding projects, cattle mutilations, crop circles, etc., but they are not being done by aliens. So do UFOs exist? Yes, absolutely. Does this answer not conflict with the question of alien visitation? No, because they are not aliens, as they were from Earth and were already here. There is only one answer to all of these constraints listed here, and some not even mentioned here, and that is tetraploid humans. The UFOs are being piloted by these tetraploid humans and not extraterrestrials from a distant solar system or through some crack or hole in the fabric of space. They are tetraploid humans originating from Earth. They have been with us for at least 12,000 years, and we have a common ancestor. The Greek and Roman gods were these tetraploids. God, Satan, Lucifer, and angels were all tetraploid humans. Zeus, Demeter, Hades, Persephone, and the other Greek and Roman gods were not myths, but were all tetraploid humans. You can think of them as genetically modified humans, just like polyploid cannabis. But I do not consider them genetically modified because their chromosomes were doubled quite naturally, even though it may have been done accidentally by humans. This is known as polyploidism, and it is observable in almost every living organism. There are no individual gametes modified, and thus it should not be within the definition of a genetically modified organism, slash, or human. What are tetraploid humans? Tetraploid humans have twice the number of chromosomes as diploid humans, the same as tetraploid cannabis, example, pink kush. This polyploid condition is caused 
from mitotic poisons during meiosis and it's completely documented in Secrets of the Pink Kush. The book Secrets of the Pink Kush provides a complete scientific explanation with supporting evidence including physical, anecdotal, historical, genetic, and empirical mathematical proofs. The biggest discovery made in the history of mankind is in Secrets of the Pink Kush.